tonight's demonstration is, as I've said, all about evergreens for the holidays. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you um, holly leaves, which I've demonstrated before, but this will be a little bit different, um, along with their other evergreen friends like pine needles and um, other needled branches, <laughs> right? Because they're called U's, E W E, I think it's or no, Y-E-W, E-W-E is a sheep, <laughs> right? Y-E-W, and it's a shrub, but it's got um, needles on it, and it's used a lot in um, evergreen arrangements and things like that. Um, so let's get to our demonstration for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get to my overhead camera, and I've got my paints all set out here. I'm on the ball tonight, let me tell you. All right, so here's some of the things I'm going to share with you guys tonight, right? As I mentioned, the holly. And um, I also I put out some treasure gold in my, my little palette here that I have covered up. But I have um, the U right here, which has some um, light and dark greens. And then just a little bit stronger version of that over here. These two, to me, represented more of your traditional pine, like um, um, what a Christmas tree would be like. Okay, so pine boughs um, that are short needled. Okay, and this being your long needle pine. All right, and then these were um, like a, they, they were called a false cypress, but I have seen these used a lot in, I had them in my front yard, even in my old house. Um, they're really pretty yellowish green, long fingered, um, branches that can be, I used to cut them and put them in my arrangements around my house for the winter. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with all of you. I'm going to be uh, throwing in a few different colorways so you can see what that looks like as well. Maybe that will inspire you. So, um... All right, so I've got some colors all laid out here. I have some apple red and wicker white. This is teal, sap green, citrus green, daffodil yellow. And then I have some treasure gold and a little floating medium right there. Okay, so I'm going to get my first brush, a 16 flat damp. And let's set this over here so you can see strokes and loading, okay? So the first thing I wanted to show you was um, the, um, the holly. But what I want to show you is just a little bit brighter green version of that. So I'm going to get my sap and citrus loaded. And you can use, I tried using my bright green. Um, and I like that color for it as well. But my bottle of bright green is kind of thick and I don't know that I didn't care for the way it stroked. So I'm going to show you just a little bit different way to get that same color if you don't have a bottle of bright green. Okay, so loading both sides of the brush, double loading the sap and citrus. Now I'm going to take my brush, flip it over. I'm going to come over here next to my teal or yeah, teal. And I'm going to work that into my citrus green. And that's going to give me a brighter version of that green. I'm going to grab just a little bit of daffodil yellow while I'm at it. Bring it over here. And that's going to brighten that up to the color that I want. Okay. So that's teal, citrus, and daffodil yellow. Get some floating medium on my brush. Work that in. There we go. Okay, so those are my two colors that I'm going to stroke my holly with. Now, when you're stroking holly leaves, I should say, um, the brush stroke, you can do it a couple of different ways and still be happy with the way it looks, all right? The, the standard one-stroke method for the holly leaf usually has you coming to points that go like this and then out to the tip on both sides, okay? And you're swinging from tip to tip with the pressure and release of pressure. So I'm going to show you real quick what that looks like. So right here, I'm going to get that set and ready. I'm going to pressure push down out to the tip, come in out to the tip, and I'm standing the chisel each time. And as I'm doing that, 
I'm bringing this front forward and then we stand to the tip right there. Okay. So the front edge of my petal or of my stroke, excuse me, of my brush was coming out to the point every time I release that and I'm bringing it forward with a twist in my fingers as I'm bringing it around to the front of the leaf. Okay. So as I'm stroking that, and that's can be fairly complicated for some of you beginners. So there's a little bit different way you can stroke that leaf and still have a, a stroke you're happy with. Okay. And so I'm going to get just silo, just a little bit of white on this. And we're going to do it just a slightly different. Instead of having to keep that up and down movement, we're going to come here and we're going to push down and we're going to wiggle and in, wiggle and in, wiggle and in, and stand up. Now I ran out of my colors here, so let me get more. And we'll restroke this. So, wiggle. so you're going to wiggle, wiggle wiggle and stand up. Okay. A little bit of yellow. All right. So over here, wiggle. So you're rounding them. They're not coming to a point. All right. And then pull your stem in. So, so you can see the difference, right? This is a little more rounded, a little easier to stroke. And then what you can do is come with your script liner and you can get the inky version of that color, or you can actually, let's streak through just a little bit of white. All right. And I'm going to come right in here and we're going to go out, 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 and to the tip. And that'll give you a very similar version without working a, a, nearly as hard, I like to think. Let's get a little white there. So out, out, out. See that? So you can still get little pretty points on the ends and you're just using your script liner to do that. And sometimes that little added touch of white looks really pretty. Okay, so what do you think, guys? All right, now one thing I want to show you, you can get some different looks. I'm going to wipe that brush off and I'm going to come here and I'm going to get just the teal and I'm going to get teal on the whole brush and then I'm going to side load white on one side. So it just gives me a little bit of uh, ombre look from dark teal to light teal. And I had that green already in my brush, so it helped me to get that darker color on the one side as well. Okay. So when you're stroking this leaf, right, point, 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 like that. Okay. Or if you struggle, you can make sure that you get a good angle. You turn your surface until you're in a position to get a better stroke. Okay. And then pull your stem in. So that's a pretty look there. Um, I like the teal for the holidays. Actually, that's in my tree, one of my trees. Okay. Now, one thing that looks really nice, let me wipe that off and I'm going to go back to my greens. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just wiping off the outside color and then I'm going and loading again. Okay. Now, one thing you can do is you can side load a little bit of treasure gold. Okay. So then when you stroke your leaf, let's get a little more of that. Sometimes you can do it and the metallic will show on top of the <clears throat> of the loaded paint. Let's see if that's going to happen for us tonight. Oh, need medium. Let's try that again. There we go. We're moving now. 
Okay, so you got a little bit of a gold. Yeah, it's not really showing. So I think what you have to do in that case is you come in and you I'm wiped off my paint color and I'm going to get medium on my brush and then side load just the gold. So if you want gold to show on top, you have to lay it or stroke it on top. Okay, so right here. Then if I overstroke what I've already done, right, then that gold is showing. So nice way to add some gold into your strokes. There, see that? Looks kind of pretty. Okay, so that's your standard holly leaf. And then the other thing I like to do was throw in some color like I did with the teal. You can do it with the red because we we have the red holly leaves or excuse me, red holly berries. So it's kind of nice to throw in a little bit of red with the leaves as you're stroking them. So I got sap green. Let me get some medium here and I'm going to grab just a little bit of the citrus green on that red edge. Okay, so you're just tinting it slightly red. And now you've got a pretty red leaf. See that? So that looks really pretty. Then if you come in with your daughter, daughter, D-O-T-T-E-R. My husband's asking me as he's doing my video translations to do the supply sheets. He's going, are you saying daughter? <laughs> no, daughter, <laughs> D-O-T-T-E-R. Okay, so this is a sponge tipped quarter inch round daughter, okay? or dauber is another way to say it. Okay. So when you do the, the um, berries, I showed this last week how to do berries, but I'll just show you real quick here, right? We're going to come in and I'm going to get um, some sap green on one corner of this. Okay. Just to get a darker tone to one side of my berry. All right. And then you can add, I'll just put them right up here at the top of this one. Push and twist, push and twist, and a little more red, not quite so much dark. Okay, push and twist. Okay. And then I can grab my script liner with a little bit of white and come right in here and add a little glare in the same spot on each berry when you have that few of them. Okay. You can do white. You could do gold too. Gold would look very pretty. Okay. So that's the holly. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. So now what I want to do, I'm going to get some of that color out of my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that. And I'm going to come back and load with I'm going to get some teal and the citrus green and then add that sap into the teal so it's slightly darker green. Okay. Get some medium. All right. And so pine needles are a pretty standard evergreen, but it's nice to kind of change up the color a little bit sometimes. So you want to stroke on the chisel edge and you can make them, some are stiff and some are long. These are long needle, kind of like a scotch pine or a white pine. Okay. And so you're starting by leading with the light color and stroking out those chisel strokes like that. And you're tipping back on the handle 
So it drags the last bristles behind and getting nice thin strokes, no pressure at all. All right, now you can reverse the brush and we're gonna still start from that same position and we're dragging the light green color behind. And this is gonna to help to give your pine needles a little more depth and stroke, okay? There we go. Now, come back and I'm gonna go side load a little bit of white on my light green edge. And we're gonna pop up just a few little highlights in there with that white. There we go, okay? So now I've got some depth in there. Finish this off with just maybe one, oops, one or two more of those strokes and see how that has, looks like it's rounded and it's not flat, okay? Then you can come right from here and you can do this with brown or green. I'm just gonna grab it like that and then you would attach it to whatever branch it was coming off of. Okay, so that's another option. Now, short needled, right, as I was demonstrating or showing you the pictures from my um, sample, okay, I wanna come and get, now I've got this, but I want more white. I'm gonna use the colors I have, so I, this side I have was the teal with the sap green and the other side was citrus and now I'm getting quite a bit more white, okay? And blending that in well. All right, so now let's come down just a little. I think you guys get the blending part of it pretty well. There we go. So looking at a U branch, Y-E-W, U, all right? You're gonna to touch, so let me show you first, let's get some direction here. So these grow in groups. All right, so I'm just gonna do three. And making sure I've got good white. So I'm gonna start out here at the tip. So these are similar to our wildflowers that we do, our stock flowers, and you're gonna push and lift, and you're gonna get a nice white, light colored tip on there, it's not white. And then you're gonna go side, middle, left and notice let me get a little bit stronger white so you can see notice that one right there it's kind of at an angle here okay so they're not straight and they're not like wheat going one side and then the other you want to go side middle middle left all right so you're staggering them and they're at a bit of a slant as they're being layered okay but I'm still seeing that green, so I'm not tipping forward on my edge. I'm straight up and down with my chisel edge and my brush touching and then leaning the bristles towards the direction that I'm stroking in, right? By leaning and applying pressure, okay, maybe you can see it here. I'm touching here, right there, and then I'm leaning the bristles with pressure and then lift, All right? And that's what gives me that little it's like a daisy stroke, daisy petal. Okay, so one, two, three. Just don't make them all the same height. That's, you know, as you're stroking these left, middle, right. Okay, overlap a little. There we go. All right, and then you have this one here. Now give that just a little bit of a curve as you're stroking that so it doesn't look stiff. And then each of these other strokes, you're gonna give a little bit of a curve to the stroke also. Can you see that? It's curved. You're still coming to the stem, but the stem is curved, so it's easy enough to do and see. Right in there, there, and there. All right. So that's a U branch. Now they're not white tipped, but for a holiday look, if you add that white to it, it's gonna give, make them look kind of frosted and they will stand out a lot more than just two colors of green. All right, two colors of green is perfectly fine, right? The stroke looks like this. Okay, but for holidays, I think sometimes the white added to it makes them look prettier. Okay, so now let's take this in a little bit different direction. 
and look at um, what I would consider to be more of a standard Christmas tree bough or branch, okay? So this would be a singular sort of piece that follows a stem like that, so it's fairly straight. All right, and I'm gonna just go with my two green colors for now, and I'm on the chisel edge, still working with the 16, okay? I'm on the chisel edge, and I'm no pressure. I'm gonna to touch and pull back with no pressure. Touch and pull back. Can you see that stroke? All right, and they go left and right, but they're straight, and so you're just touching and pu slightly pulling back and it's giving you just a little bit of a pointed tip or rounded tip out here. And now I'm going to start to overlap them and there's absolutely no pressure. So it's just touching that chisel edge down and pulling the brush towards the stem as you lift. So almost like a little flick, but it's not elongated. Okay. So as I'm building this, I'm overlapping and I can go straight to side, straight to side. So they're perpendicular to the stem and angles in between and then keep coming back. I'm trying to think of the name of the tree. My mother loved these as, as a Christmas tree. They were always so expensive if you bought the fresh ones. And I can't think of what they're called, but they had these skinny little needles. They got very hard when they dried. Let me tell you, step on one of those in the carpet. Ouch. Okay. So can you see how that's layering and filling in? And it's very spaced out. So you see in between the branches or the, the needles, I should say. All right, so that looks really pretty. Now, what happens when we add some white to that light green? So let's come back to what we had before and, set and load white onto that light green edge. Give it more of a frosted look and get just a touch of medium so it helps my brush is getting a little sticky. Okay, so here then we're gonna do another stem like that. And we're going to come from here and do those same little touch and, and pull, leaving lots of gaps. Like a flocked Christmas tree branch. It does, doesn't it? All right, so just short little, almost like a pipe cleaner sort of look here, but so they have to, those angles have to overlap each other. See that? So I have this one here. It still comes to the branch, but it overlaps all those three. And that will give you that more rounded look because it will look like they're going around the branch. and not just laying on top of it. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's switch to a smaller brush. It is a very light touch, Miss Lucy. Thank you for that compliment, I appreciate it. Um, if you work on just barely touching that chisel edge down and then pulling on, on the surface, sliding on the surface, I should say you'll have success with it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch now to a number eight flat and I'm gonna work with my green. So I'm gonna get some sap on one side and some citrus on the other. And then occasionally I'm gonna swipe through some white. And so boxwoods, right? If you were to paint a stroke, a boxwood leaf, right? They're usually like a, a pointed or round like that. And let me tell you, doing a whole bunch of those, yes, it is kind of like a spruce, but Bobby, thank you. Um, doing a bunch of those would get to be very tedious. So I feel like this, these little strokes like that, flip the brush over, and you're just little angular leaf strokes 
overlapping. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. All right, a little bit of white. And you see a lot of boxwood wreaths now and uh, swags, different things. And so I thought, how fun would it be to just stroke a few little leaves like that and you're just picking up on one side's one color, the other side's a dark color, light green, and then occasionally I'm sweeping through white on my light green edge. Okay, and so you can get a really pretty look, like you could do a wreath. Going around like this, and it is singular strokes, but they're simple and quick. So just picking up different colors, and this will give that look of a boxwood wreath quick and easy. Almost like slip slap, except that you are kind of more deliberate with the strokes so that they look more like a leaf. Right? Grab some more white. A little bit of light green. And this side needs some dark over here. So see how I'm coming around with that? And just repositioning my brush, but all the strokes come in towards the wreath frame. Okay. There we go. So just a real simple, pretty boxwood wreath. Then you can come and get, I got my, grab my script liner. You could do a couple of things. You could come and get some inky gold. So I got treasure gold here. Right, and you could add a cute little string bow. simple little chisel or um, script liner strokes, right? Little liner. And if you streak through some white, once you get that in there, you can come along the tops of the curves like that and give it a little bit of a highlight that'll help it show up. Then you can come, let me clean that off real quick. And you can come and get some red on the tip of the brush and you can go around and dot little berries like this or you could use better yet your kiss daughter where is it <laughs> my husband's gonna love me it's a daughter oh, I can't find it it was here that's okay kiss daughter also a stylus will work so you could use that too but something with a little round tip okay so little red berries around that. Make a fun, quick and easy little wreath. This would look really cute on an ornament. Okay. All right, so let's get to the last thing, which was this, um, it's called a false juniper, I think, or false cypress, that's what it is. And so the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna get my six flat again. All right, and I'm gonna get medium. Let's bring this over here. Medium, a whole bunch of medium, and a little bit of sap green. Okay, we're going to shift everything this way. Okay, 
So right here, I'm in a lot of medium, and I just want a little bit of a dark background for this to show up against, okay? So you can have loose, rough edges, lots of medium. Okay, so just a dark background for it to show. And then I'm going to load with daffodil yellow on that brush, come side load a little bit of the citrus green. So these are kind of a bright yellowish green color and they have like a web of um, needles that come off of it. So I'm going to do it like this and like that. So little stems that you can work with. And then coming off of those and you have little tiny strokes. So let's come way down here so you can see this a little better. There we go. Now, I want to grab just a touch of white. It might help that show up just a little bit better. There we go. White with that yellow. And these are just short little strokes with the tip of the chisel, just like we did with the evergreen, um, the, the needles. I'm going to go with the blue spruce on that. That wasn't the tree my mother loved, but that's the only thing that I can think of that somebody said it. Thank you very much for that. It's like a hybrid tree or something. I can't remember though. Short needles and very perfect looking. All right, but this this um, false cypress gets these really pretty. They're kind of I like them for a filler, right? If I'm doing a pot or something, and and you have. Maybe some dogwood twigs in there, the red kind, and then um, some sort of holly or something. And then these are really nice to kind of tuck in and around. They kind of froth it up and fill in some of the areas, gaps. Okay, so just a little short and they all kind of intersect and flow over each other. I need a little bit of white here will give me some that are highlighted and stand out. There we go. Okay, so just a little bit different, something I thought maybe I would share with you as an option. If you might want to think about adding something like this in a design, it might be something bigger. Maybe you do a larger painting, but you just change up the size of your brush. Okay. There you go. So you get that little frothy green behind it, the dark green behind it just helps those lighter colored strokes show up a little better. When you're working with a small brush, it's easy to get muddy. So you don't want to necessarily have to keep stroking heavy paint on top of heavy paint, right? So this helps to have that darker background and then you just add the light strokes on top. All right. Okay, so there you go. Now, one last thing I want to share with you. Um, when you're doing something like that, you, um, and you want it to, I don't know, just take on a little bit bigger needle stroke. Let me load this with white. This is my 16 again. And I'm going to side stroke some sap green. And so Donna does this a lot with her, um, to her designs to fill in on her holiday designs. <clears throat> and so what you want to do, you don't want it necessarily a nice flat chisel edge. So you can come right into your plate here and kind of tap it off a little bit. So you break it up and you're going to touch here and pull and pull and pull, All right? So little flicks of and you've got uh, flicks on the chisel and you've got this wider white uh, tip on these. So slightly at an angle, we'll get that 
that white tip. I'm going to come back and add this in here. Okay, so you, can you see how that looks a little more um, bulkier and uh, frosted or flocked? Okay, so it's a little bit of an angle as you're pulling it down. All right, so just another option. Okay, so there we go. Those are all of the different types of evergreens and needles and different leaves and things like that. So I thought I would share all of that with you guys tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something that will help you with your next holiday painting, whether that's for sale or for a gift or for yourself. Okay.